Ladies and gentlemen in the Shred Gaming Center Comp video, we're going to be continuing the Direct X 12 train for the moment, but actually veering off into a different track. We're going to talk about the PlayStation 4 because a lot of gamers have been saying, well, maybe the X 12 is going to be really revolutionary for the Xbox One. How is it going to impact the PlayStation 4? You know, what what's the difference going to be? Particularly, um, as obviously, the X12 is going to be a significant improvement for CPU type of performance. And we'll get into that in just a second. Brad Wardell uh, said, um, and I quote, he is obviously the CEO of Stardock. Um, and I quote, Effects that Mantle DX12 makes easier, temporal anti-aliasing, object space rendering, lots, thousands of light sources, doing this now in Mantle. As a result, games start to look different than what we've seen for years, and it's both subtle and profound. Now, this is the part that I think many people are going to want to know about the most, but PS4 fans will have something exciting to rejoice about soon. Beware of poo-pooing DX12 slash mantle architecture lest you eat crow. Now, I don't want to get super technical with this video because I kind of want to make this a quickie because I've got some stuff in the works over the next couple of days. But I do want to go into this a little bit. Um, suffice to say, the problem is we don't really know what's going on in terms of the state of the PlayStation 4 API both now and also what Sony are doing in the future. So here, here's the reality of it from the Xbox One leaks and also the PS4 stuff that I'm hearing about as well as Mantle, DX12 and some other bits and bobs. Um, because I just want to kind of get this out into the open. First of all, starting with DX12 and the Xbox One's SDK. So the Xbox One's SDK has leaked, and obviously some source documentation, in other words, you could consider it like a readme file, has been released with it. But there are some significant portions of the documents that will actually tell you if you want more information, click this link. And that part hasn't been leaked. So what I'm basically telling you is that there is some information that the Xbox One um, GPU, CPU, the, some of the bus stuff, it simply isn't there. So that leads to a lot of hypothesis, that leads to uh, some guesswork, to be totally honest. Although we do have a lot more information, certainly, than what we did, say, a month ago. The other point is that even if I had the, all of that documentation... We don't really know what Microsoft are working on in the background because there are a couple of hints that stuff's going to change, particularly when DX12 comes out, right? So that's that's on the Xbox One side of things. On the PS4 side of things, Sony aren't just going to be sitting on their thumbs and watching Microsoft because it's obvious they know what each other are doing, at least to a degree. Obviously, there's some industrial espionage or at least keeping tabs on what the other one's doing. With regards to the PlayStation 4, the PS4 has 512 megabytes of flexible memory plus 5 gigabytes of regular RAM allocated, but we don't really know if that's still the case because that was back in the day with like Killzone Shadow 4 post-mortems. Um, and I'm not saying it's no longer the case, I'm, and I'm not trying to start a rumor here, I'm just simply saying that we don't know if it's still the case right now because it can change at a drop of a hat. And the second point, we don't know about CPU reserves anymore. We don't know if there's still two CPUs reserved for the operating system. We don't know about even the X, even the PlayStation 4's GPU reserves. Like everyone talks about the PS4's GPU reserve uh, GPU performance. This is 1.84 teaflops. But I got some news for you. There's a possibility that a portion of that is allocated to system reserves, and we don't know what portion. It could be a very marginal amount, like less than 1%, but we don't really know that. And we also don't know the efficiency of the memory. I've heard some figures banded about of about 170 gigabytes per second, but obviously that's banded about and that's not 100% accurate. Now, regarding a slightly more overview, a broader overview, and let's focus primarily on the PC for a second, DirectX 12, there's some documentation that I found that hasn't really been in the public eye, so I'm going to go for it more soon, but GDC's not exactly around the corner, but it's coming up, um, and the problem with that is that we don't really know a lot of stuff until it comes, because once GDC pops up, 
we as consumers will probably not see all of it. In other words, some of the white papers that are shown, some of the uh, technology, some of the the discussions, they are kind sometimes held in closed rooms. In other words, we don't sometimes get the audio visual portions of it. So even sometimes reading slides, it's very difficult to get some of the context behind them without the, the chat and narration. It, it's almost like going to a lecture, but just kind of reading the notes sometimes. And obviously trying to read notes doesn't necessarily mean that you're reading that in the right context, which, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt sometimes. My point being, however, and the primary thing to take away from this is that DirectX 12, the PC, all of it is going to be very interesting over the next couple of months. And how I'm taking Brad's tweets, and obviously I'm not putting words into his mouth, this is just how I'm assuming um, we're probably meant to take this, is that at GDC, or at least around this kind of time period, maybe the next six months or so at most, Sony are probably going to be changing their SDKs as well, or it's already evolving. Now, what they're actually doing, who the hell knows? Now, from what I personally understand about the PlayStation 4's API and slash development tools, and once again, we're going with some fairly antiquated documentation here, is that the PlayStation 4's GPU slash architecture allows you to go fairly low level. I'm not quite sure how low. In other words, how low does it go? It's like a limbo bar. Yes, low is low, but how low, who the hell knows? For example, Microsoft said that there were some extensions that allow you to go low level. That was, I think that was at a GDC, 2014, if memory serves. I'm not 100%, but I think that's where uh, I first reported that. But I don't know if it's changed. My point being that there were some low level extensions, but how low level they were, it was a bit ambiguous. Now, obviously, the PlayStation 4, same deal. So how the PS4's API um, and stuff actually stacks up against the latest version of Microsoft drivers is really a bit difficult to know. It's a bit of a head-scratcher. Personally speaking, I only think this is a good thing because, as I've said, DirectX 12, let's just ignore the technical side of things, what it does for a moment, in other words, how it interfaces with the CPU or the draw calls and all of that bollocks. And more to the point, focus on what it's going to do for us as gamers. Because at the end of the day, unless you're developing a game, you shouldn't really care about... Well, okay, I wouldn't say you shouldn't care about it, but it doesn't have a direct impact to you how difficult necessarily, um, you know, the technical jargon. What does impact you is, A, is it going to be easy to develop for? Because if you can't develop for it, if the tools suck, it's not going to be ideal. Because that's the problem Microsoft had originally with the Xbox One's uh, architecture. Or oh, should I say SDK. It was a pain in the butt to develop for. The second point is what will it actually make a difference in? So yes, if it makes differences in lighting. If it makes a difference in, say, object detail. If it makes a difference in improvements to shadows and other bits and bobs. Then that's obviously a really good thing for us as gamers. Because... Let's face it, there are some major problems at the moment when it comes to this stuff. Um, light sourcing is quite costly because it well takes a lot of rendering time. So obviously these changes as they evolve are going to make quite a bit of difference in my opinion. And it's not just a case of, well, a fixed spec either. It's also about making the most of it. It's also about efficiency. The X12 does bring in some levels of efficiency, and I'm assuming the PlayStation 4's API will probably do the same, meaning that let's just assume, just for the sake of argument, one T flop of computing power is what you've got now. It doesn't necessarily mean that that type of one T flop um, in the future is going to render the same level of quality. It could be slightly more. I'm not saying it's suddenly going to make the PlayStation 4 incomplete and adequate compared to the Xbox One. I'm merely pointing out that as SDKs improve and efficiencies increase, you can basically bundle instructions with other things. You can make improvements to the memory bandwidth in terms of the efficiency and how things work. And obviously all of that stuff. It's pretty awesome. So... Both consoles are going to be evolving. That's pretty much how I'm seeing what Brad's saying. And I, I don't want to read between the lines too much more because obviously it's pretty ambiguous. But I, for one, welcome low-level APIs. And 
for me personally, and if I had to really pick a side in PC in gaming, it would be that I'm a PC gamer primarily, as most of you probably know. And PC gaming has been at a little bit of an impasse, a little bit of a stall recently, simply because of DX11. And don't forget that DirectX itself, DirectX 11's had a couple of different iterations, for example, DX11.1. And this isn't new, this is like even DirectX 9, I mean, look, there was 9, there was 9A, I believe it was, and I think it went to SP, and then it went to C, which I think was the final version. I think there was even a couple of different derivatives of C, just how they did some bug fixes and some improvements. And then, of course, it went to DirectX 10, which had some fairly large improvements in itself, and then, of course, it's going to 11, now we're moving to 12. So, what I'm basically saying is that DirectX 12 will likely evolve over the couple of years as well. So, I'm assuming there's going to be a DirectX 12.1 and possibly even 12.2 and that naturally will have some improvements of its own. What those are, who the hell knows, that's what I say. But, as I said, a bit of a rambly ranty one this one, but I just want to kind of put it out there. Not necessarily super technical, but uh, just kind of some thoughts and opinions spurred on by Brad and just a little bit of research I've been doing on the side. Meanwhile, hopefully you have found this something interesting, informative, food for thought, something to listen to while you're on the bus or whatever. But I would appreciate a share or a comment, a like or subscribe or an internet hug even. That would be mostly very and greatly appreciated. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.